of working from home. For those who go to the gym, this is also not possible because gyms have been closed and once they have been opened, many have not returned because of safety precautions. Therefore, even our exercise routines have been interrupted because of COVID. While working from home, we might have some benefits, but yet there's some downfalls. We spend hours in front of Zooms, meeting after meeting. We sit in front of our devices, and we only stop to eat or snack. So our life is sitting, eating, and snacking. Some studies show the average American, and I would also go so far as it also applies to Kenya, have gained nine kilos Whoa. from March 2020 to March 2021. And remember, we're halfway through the year almost, so even more than that. When I get together with my friends, we question each other. What size are you now? <laughs> Meaning, after the time of lockdown, what size are you wearing since COVID-19? I know that this might be a lady question, and us ladies talk about this often. We have long, we have long discussions about our BMI, our body mass index, and how we want to correct it. Now, this is not Health Sunday. And I will leave this conversation with our doctors and healthcare professionals. But today is Prayer Ministry Sunday. The topic of my sermon is what size are you? Not your dresses or your trousers, but what size is your prayers on the FAI? This morning, as I was having my cup of coffee, I received a text message from one of the members of Kilalashwa. She said, I did a Google search. And what is the FAI? I cannot see it in Google. Well, you probably won't find it in Google because I just made up the term. <laughs> but yet it's still in the Bible. The FAI, is what size are you in the FAI? It's the Faith Abundance Index. What size is your prayers? Can it be measured on your on our on an FAI? Growing up in church, our services used to always begin with testimonies. As we're waiting for people to come, people would share their testimonies of the blessings of God. Especially during Holy Communion Sunday, we would have testimony, a time of testimony service. And all the older members used to end their testimony with this. Those who know the worth of prayer, please pray my strength in the Lord. The first seven words, those who know the worth of prayer might sound strange to you if you're hearing it for the first time. But it is a powerful statement. At the same time, it is a challenge. I know that this is not a statement that we hear in Kenya, but it is the first lesson of my sermon this morning. I pose to you, do you know the worth a prayer. Now I've heard of ministries that charge the minister. If you want the minister to pray for you, you have to pay a certain fee. Has anyone heard that? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. My question about the worth of prayer is not about buying or paying someone to pray for you. You did not hear there is a prayer box here, and next to the prayer box, there's another box for you to put money in before the intercessors pray for you. They didn't say that, right? <laughs> it is clear indication that these ministries that charge for prayers, as well as those who pay for prayers, do not understand the worth of prayer. It cannot be 
monetized. The richest person in the world, if they liquidated all their assets to, because they wanted a prayer, and a prayer answered, would not have enough money to pay for prayer. To know the worth of prayer is to understand who we are connected to. Mm -hmm. Now this is laid out in Genesis. God began with nothing. With the presence of the Holy Spirit and speaking his word created creation happened. God brought order, light, life, and beauty out of chaos and darkness. God said, let there be, and it happened. Now allow me to digress for a few minutes, my friends. I don't know what chaos that you might be going through in your life, but the word of God today, God is speaking into your chaos, and God is saying, let there be, my friends, receive it. Amen. The worth of prayer can only be understood from the beginning where, where we read about God, the architect of the universe. God, the senior engineer, worked out of nothingness, using math and science to design the world in an organized efficiency. When God saw that it was good, God had another project. God did not dispatch his angels to do the job, but God took personal involvement in, in the making of men and women, humanity. God, the geologist, bent over and used the richness of the soil to fashion and design humanity. The chief, the chief physician used 206 bones. Am I right, Dr. Anybody here the health? I hope not, because if I made a mistake, then no one else will know it. <laughs> Unless you're that member who Googles what I say. <laughs> The chief physician used 206 bones to make the frame, put into the frame the organs of brain and, and held together by a skin suit full of ligaments and, and sensory organs. The final touch was the breath of the divine breath of God into us, which fashioned us a person. I hope you're not lost. I'm talking, I'm taking the long route to help us to understand the worth of prayer. God's actions, giving us breath, gave us life, as well as the ability to speak. The act of breathing that keeps us alive also enables us to communicate. We breathe and speak because of his breath given to us. For those who know the worth of prayer, prayer is a privilege. We have to use the breath of life to speak to our creator. Prayer is a means of communicating with our maker. Prayer is our connection with God and God's connection with us. Now in that passage that was read this morning by Sammy and company from the Old Testament, I invite you to read the whole book to understand the fullness of that passage. Joshua and the Israelite army went to war and defeated the southern Canaanite coalition forces and the kings who held, headed up the defeated forces fled 
to try to save their lives. Now you get me. My daughter, Atieno, said to me, now mommy, why would the president of Afghanistan flee the country and leave everyone behind? I didn't know the question to that. I began to speculate the answer to that. But here in the text or the Bible, we're told that the kings that headed up these coalitions, forces fled to save their own lives. Are you with me? Mm -hmm. They hid in a place called Makeda, in a cave. The biblical account in the book of Joshua, it said that they were soon found and Joshua was informed. So he traveled southwards to where these five kings were and he sealed them inside their hiding place using a large rock to cover the mouth of the cave. This, the jail was regarded by some soldiers until Joshua had finished off defeating the coalition troops. He gave priority to destroying the enemy and then he would deal with the captured kings. Joshua orders in verse 19 were, the, were for Israel forces to move rapidly and to catch the various groups of the enemy soldiers. Starting with the rear of the columns, he said slaughter them. Israel divided their forces into several groups and each of these five armies had different destinations. Now why did you go to that detail where we kill what sense does that make? We see how Israel was obedient to God as she prepared herself for war. This is important to note that Joshua and his army prepared for war. Joshua had a strategy on how he would carry out what God had given him to do. Are you following my trail of thought? Mm -hmm. This is an important point in our lesson. Prayer requires us to prepare. Mm -hmm. Prayer requires us to plan. Mm -hmm. Third, prayer requires us to be obedient to God. Oftentimes, people feel that they can pray and not do anything else. Now, I think if I would ask a question, everyone would have their hand up. So I want, I would just make an assumption now that everyone here are farmers. Am I correct? Everyone here, whether it be a kitchen garden or a chamber at home, has something. And we pray that our crops would grow. But none of us pray that our crops would grow and grow and sit back and do nothing. We prepare the land. We plant the seeds. We cultivate the crops in order to reap the harvest. Am I correct? Mm -hmm. So it's okay to say amen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we pray that COVID-19 pandemic will end. Mm -hmm. But in order for it to end, we can't just sit back and pray that it ends. We've got to wear a mask. Now, not something on our chin, but a mask that covers our nose and our mouth. Mm -hmm. We have to wash our hands and often. Mm -hmm. We have to distance ourselves. And yes, I'm gonna say it, we gotta get the vaccination. I like being political, but we gotta get the vaccination. Now this is not Health Sunday, but I'm talking about how we pray and what we pray for, but yet we do nothing. <laughs> we pray for a job. And we pray for a job, but yet we sit home and watch TV. And every time the church do, we say, well, I'm doing a noble thing because I'm coming to church on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, but we're not looking for a job. I had a relative who was staying, who has very good um, degrees. And she was praying for a job and she was out of a job for several, several, I think even years, not even months. I told her of a job that she fit the qualifications. 
I even forwarded her CV to the person and they said, she looks just like what we want. I told her about the job, would she desperately need it? Because the relatives were helping her out. And she said to me, that's nepotism. I'm not gonna even go for an interview. <laughs> okay, <laughs> okay. We pray, but there is no action. There is no plan. I'm gonna leave that alone. I think you got my point. Joshua and his army had marched through the night and had done all that they could do to prepare themselves for battle. They were acting in obedience to God, had called what God had called them to do. Their faith was not their own strength, but in God's strength. Their courage was not from their own power, but from God's power. They won the battle. This is another lesson today in our text. But we must understand that, that in times, victory comes at a cost, even though the Lord had assured them victory. Obedience leads us to victory. Disobedience leads us to defeat. Either way, personal risks must be taken and sometimes casualties happen. To claim a victory does not mean the, we only sit down and pray. It doesn't mean that we raise our hands and shout, Lord, we claim the victory over sickness. But yet, we still sit and we eat. We sit and we eat. But yet we say, Lord, we claim the victory over sickness. But yet we do nothing to change the things that we that we, we can change. <clears throat> Sitting and praying is equivalent to Joshua seeking Lord's counsel, the Bible says. Seeking the Lord's counsel means prayer. It is necessary, this is necessary to obey God is critical. Asking God to how do we do this? But after sitting and praying and seeking the counsel of God, it's time for action. And action can, can mean life-threatening challenges. It can mean fearful encounters. It can mean opening our lives for change that may not meet our own expectations. But yet we expect divine victory it's never painless, my friends. God's only son went to hell to give us heaven. But in the end, it was all victory. I'm about to come to the a close. But I want to know, what size is your prayers according to the Faith Abundant Index? There is a direct coalition between faith and our prayer life. We ask, but we do not believe that God will answer our prayers. What size are your prayers? The prayer, the prayer of Joshua was a big prayer. It was a brazen prayer. If Joshua would come or would have come to my office, and said to me, this is the prayer that I prayed. I kid you not. I would have told him, you're asking too much, Joshua. I would have told him, that's impossible. God will not, God will not change the natural order of the universe just for you. Who do you think you are, Ellen? You think God is gonna do that for you? This has never been done before. Nope, it'll never happen. Would have been my prayer, my words. What size is your prayer, Joshua? According to the Faith Abundance Index, the passage re I read to you in the New Testament, Jesus gives us the formula for a successful prayers in living life. God gives them the Faith Abundance index. Now I see that's where it's from. Your faith should be like a mustard.
mustard seed. Nothing will be impossible for you. This response came because in spite of the disciples having experienced an incredible personal religious experience, they had just le left the Mount of Transfiguration. Do you remember what happened there? Where the disciples saw and experienced the radiant glory of God shine through Jesus. You would have thought that they would have been high in, on Jesus and God and they would have embraced it and felt like they could do anything after that experience. But what happened? They came down the mountain. They were met by a man who had a son who had demons. And he begged them, he begged them to remove the evil spirit. They tried, but they were unsuccessful. Jesus came down and rebuked them and rebuked the evil spirit and the spirit departed. Jesus pointed out to them that they could not because they had little faith. What size, Kilalashra and friends, is your prayers? Joshua prayed because he had faith, which caused him to have big prayers, bold prayers. Joshua prayed because he was not persuaded by the priests of the day that he was praying the wrong prayer. He understood that the, the God in him and what the God in him can do. He understood that he was created with the breath of God. And if he had the breath of God, he had the life of God. And there was nothing too hard. He could face the fearsome battle. Jo Joshua's men marched all through the night. The battle was on as they were fiercely fighting their contestants. The, army, the armies clashed all day. Joshua's men were winning, but the job was not done yet. Joshua needed more daylight to finish fighting. Joshua, with his brazen prayers, asked God to make the sun stand still. And guess what? God did it. Amen. Oh, sun, stand still over Gideon. Amen. Oh, moon, after the valley of Ajalon. So the sun stood still. The moon stopped till the nations avenged itself from its enemies. Let's, a people of God, say amen. amen. What size is your faith? on the faith abundance index. Jesus encouraged his disciples to have bold, brazen faith. Faith that puts their trust in God. Faith like Joshua, that had a plan of action that at the same time allowed God's power to flow through him and his troops to accomplish God's work. Joshua didn't walk around puffed up saying, look at me. It's my plan of action that Abe was able to win this war. But Joshua understood where his power comes from. What size is your faith, my friends? The challenge this morning is to learn to pray big prayers, bold prayers, brazen pr prayers. This requires a small amount of faith and action is needed. It is a vision, not of, but what will become, will it really happen? We must look beyond tomorrow's realities. We must look beyond today's realities, I'm sorry to see tomorrow's possibilities. You hear me? Mm -hmm. I know what you see today. I know what your life might look like today. But my brothers and sisters, we are called to look to see tomorrow's possibilities. Mm -hmm. Like Joshua prayed 
and went into battle. He was not like me, consumed with the thought of, but what if, I know what I pray, but what if we run out of daylight? He did not allow his blood pressure to go up because he was pondering, if, would God really help us fight the battle? Oh, what is around him and seeing what is around him and thinking to himself, but what if we lost? He trusted in God. He put his faith in God. This is to say, he had a belief that was not based on proof. As a matter of fact, he had never experienced this happening before. He was asking God not for the same miracle that he gave our dear brother Hezron, or, or Elder Elizabeth, God, I want the same blessing you gave Sister Elizabeth or, 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 or Sister Mugo or Deacon Shadrach. But he said he was asking God something that he's never even seen before. You see how difficult that might be. He went into battle under the assumption that it will happen. Something he never saw before. His faith was steeped in prayer and a devotion to God. He had a faith that was connected to God because he knew that he was connected to God. A faith that held on to the promises that, that can be read in the first chapter of the book of Joshua. Now this, my friends, was not written down. It was an oral tradition that was passed down from generation to generation. First Joshua 1 and 9 says, have I commanded you? Be strong, vigorous, and courageous. Do not be afraid, neither be dismayed, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Amen. Finally, God fights for us. God fights for us. Faith, my friends, is a choice. When it comes to, to when, when times are challenging and there are obstacles all around, what size, Kilalashra, is your prayers? Is it based on the faith abundance index? Are we going to face calamities in, in our own strength? Are we going to figure this out and try to make it work on our own? Or are we going to choose to pray, to seek the counsel of God? My friends, will we allow the fullness of God, his power, his strength, his wisdom, his love, to flow through us in every situation? We are called into action by life. Will we choose, my friends, to act on our own initiative or seek the counsel of God? God can do anything, even the impossible. Through prayer and faith, we trust God is acting through us to achieve the outcomes he deems best for our concern. When we try to control the outcome of the situation or make something happen, make sure this is a sign that we are moving in our own strength and not the fullness of God. Friends, how big are your prayers? Is an indication of your faith in God who breathed the divine breath into you. When, does, when you pray, does your faith abundance index skill read mustard seed or does it read faith that is acting on its own? There's a song that says, that's entitled, Conquer Anything. And I want to close with the lyrics. We can conquer anything that sees 
the invisible, inspects the incredible, expects the incredible, receives the impossible. Faith that, that unroots your problems. Faith to know that God can solve them. Faith to vision your freedom. Faith to reach the unreachable. Faith to fight the unbeatable. Faith to remove the unmovable. Faith that can stir the invisible. Faith that can conquer anything. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Our Lord and our God, we come here this Sunday, prayer ministry Sunday. And God, we've been going through life praying small prayers, praying but really not believing that, that God, you can do it. We come, oh God, on this day to say, God, I want to turn over my chaos to you. God, I want to turn over all those things that I've been holding on to you, oh God. God, I believe and trust. My faith has been faith that I rely on my own, but not mustard seed faith, oh God. God, we want to come on this day saying, I trust you, oh Lord. I believe that you can do it, oh God. I know you can, oh Lord, move in our life. I know you can move in this plot. That little money is insignificant to God. What we need is peanuts, oh God. So I trust, but God, my trust is not a trust that sits back and folds my arms. My trust is a trust that also knows that I too must act. Little becomes much. We place it in the hands of God. God, I've been praying for things about my family day in and day out. But in actuality, God, I've not really been believing. I pray, but I don't know if you can really do it because it's a bit much of God. But God, just like Joshua, who prayed what he's never even seen before, who's prayed not based on someone else, my friend's prayer, but prayed a prayer of impossibility and you moved in it. So God, I pray for those impossible situations in our life. I pray for the financial breakthroughs. I pray for the family members that are dealing with psychological problems. I pray. I pray for those who, who are involved in addiction, oh God. And God, year after year, I never see the end of it, oh God. We have been toiling and praying. But God, I know you can. And I trust. So my job, is to just skip around my house and say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you for the healing. Thank you for the breakthrough. Thank you for touching my situation. Thank you for breaking into my chaos. Thank you for doing it, oh God. That's what I'm gonna do because I believe in you. I'm connected to you. So as I pray, my breath speaks to you. As I pray, I know that I'm connected to God, and God is connected to me. We pray these things as a community that is steeped in prayer and faith. We vow ourselves to pray and act in open. In Jesus' name, amen. Once again, let us appreciate our reverend Hi.